Great. Now, I want to I want to bring a very uh, unique perspective here, especially uh, for the theologians, but I will also be expecting Morris to come on board. Now, what if Christians... Um, okay, let, let me put it this way. Why should we defend mm. um, uh, the existence of God? Why should Christians defend the existence of God? If, if we are convinced that he's existing... Uh, what will be the danger of just allowing Morris to to talk about it, and and we just don't defend? We don't have to defend. The Holy Spirit will. Mm. I think you use you said the Holy Spirit yes. is working yeah. in us. I think well to start off, number one is because if we take the Bible to be true and for what it is saying, then we have an invitation both by I mean by God, not both, but by God, to be loving enough to our neighbors to share to them the truth about the existence of God because, of course, of the implications thereof also. Mm. So that I don't think it is a loving thing to see somebody, if you are convinced of what you are saying to be true, I don't think it is a loving thing to just let them be mm. without sharing to them. Of course, again, with respect, without sharing to them the truth. But mm. more importantly... Remember when I began, I said that this question hinges on the nature of reality. That is, reality is such that either there is a God or there isn't. Now, the implication of that is this. If God exists, there's a way in which reality is. And if God does not exist, there's a way in which reality is. Mm -hmm. The question is, does reality lead us to seeing whether that there is a God or there is no God. And let me give you an example. People have already appreciated that if there is no God, life would be utterly meaningless. That is to say, at the end of the day, even if you create your own meaning, even if you decide to do your own small thing here, at the end of the day, you are delusional. Because we are all ending up in the same place, isn't it? We are going to die and we are going to disappear. So if God does not exist, it doesn't make a difference if I am a Hitler or I am a Mother Teresa. It doesn't make a difference if I study or I don't study. It, at the end of things, and notice I'm not saying now, there could be a difference for someone who studies now. But at the end of the day, if there is no God, then it is the person who studied, the person who was nice, the person who was moral, is equally the same as the person who was a killer, a murderer, and all these things. So I think it matters mm. because if, if then there is no God, then we are wasting our time and we have no business even of doing science, for example, because what is the value <laughs> of science? You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the value of, you know, making life better if at the end of the day we are coming to the same conclusion? So you understand yeah. what I mean? I understand. So if reality is, and I think reality is such that God exists, then the question becomes utterly important. Right. We cannot live our lives as if they are meaningless, as if they are purposeless, and of no value. Mm. And actually, Lisa, we are not defending the existence yes. of God. Okay, yeah. go ahead and then I'll bring <laughs> yes. it. Yes. Yeah. We are not defending the existence of God. Mm. Uh, the existence of God is actually our default setting. Wow. <laughs> not only for Christians, mm. but That's for everybody. Do, uh, <laughs> Except me. I yeah. know, <laughs> uh, even you, because yeah. first of all, you have come up with a definition or of somebody called God, and you have whom you don't know, and you I've, have concluded. I've read him in the Bible. Yeah. You have read about him in the Bible, uh -huh. and you have concluded that that person does not exist. Logically, yes. Yeah. Lo logically, does not exist. Uh -huh. And I've given you an example. There are a lot of things that logically we can't explain, but that does not mean we we don't believe in them. Simple things, flying in a plane. Logically, do you know, we, many of, most of us do not know how a plane, a huge plane, maybe a smaller one, one engine plane, you mm. might uh, think, okay, maybe the wind can take it up. But there's a huge plane carrying 500 plus people plus uh, with luggage, and it takes off the ground stays in the skies for 10 hours before it comes down again. Logically, it's do you know... Yeah. Eh? It's counterintuitive, obviously. Eh? Do you know how it works? No. You will not know, but you still believe. So, but I will not say, I don't know how it works, therefore God. I will... Uh, no, uh, no, I'm not attributing to God. You're saying, uh, my point is, 
you don't have to know everything logically mm. to believe in it. Mm-hmm. Because you guys, you are you deny the existence of God because it does not make logical sense, yeah. right? And I'm, not, and I'm telling you, there are a lot of things that don't not, do not make logical sense to us, or to most people, but they still believe in it. Mm. Like, for instance, if I went, sorry for using my mom, if I went home to the village and I ex- started explaining to my mom how this sanctuary, this church, this building has been put up. And I tell her, no, mom, the foundation was... Uh, don't know how many feet down, then they did concrete, they did this, and there's this pillar. Honestly, and this is why she will, she will get lost. <laughs> uh, I mean, in fact, it will be a waste of time. <clears throat> but you ask her, mom, do you think that building was built? She will say, yes, somebody built it. Do you know how she did it? How he, uh, the person did it? No. So, my friend, the fact that you don't logically, you cannot logically explain something does not mean, therefore, that thing is not no, true no. or doesn't exist. Now, to say that we don't know, of course we know. How do we know? Because the God who created the, uh, the earth and everything in it mm-hmm. has also chosen to tell us how he did it. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you may disagree that maybe the guys who wrote it, they were writing works of fiction. That's what they say. That's, the, that's the, more the, the artist says we the Christians use what they are calling secular reasoning. Secular reasoning. Uh, secular reasoning secular. when it comes to the yeah. Bible uh, that we are assuming what we are proving. You're starting uh, with a conclusion yes. and then now... Come. Oh, we start the conclusion. God created... Uh, Call it a creation. So let me now show the creation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, uh, okay, we, we, even without calling it creation, certainly <laughs> all of us <laughs> will agree that the world had a source. Uh, probably. Yeah. No, it can't be probably because it exists. <laughs> it Since it exists, <laughs> most so certainly it had an origin. I'm actually that, coming to that. That's a claim. Oh, yeah, I'm awesome. actually coming to the yeah. creation. It's a, it's a whole uh, beautiful thing. I want us to discuss mm-hmm. that. Uh, maybe if I can bring uh, Linsa okay. here. Yeah. Linsa, the, the bit that why, why are we spending all this time uh, to, to, to prove uh, all that, that God exists? Uh, yeah, concerning the same. Uh, you know, if uh, if um, a layman asks me from outside that, do you think that you should defend your God? Uh, as a person, I will stand up and say, yes, I think I need to defend my God. But in reality, God can defend him- himself. Mm-hmm. Because he God doesn't need like his creation to fight for him. Mm-hmm. Because we are de- really fully dependent on him in a way that he's the one who protects us and... Uh, and also saves us from all the situations. So let me have at least a bibli- one biblical reference mm-hmm. I'm going to read. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, always be ready to give a defense of the faith that is in you. Mm-hmm. That is what the scripture tells us. Mm-hmm. So when I'm approached by either Muslim who wants to like hear about my faith, uh, at this position, I'm going to give it my all to defend the faith that I have in. In Jesus, and that is what also Paul was also proclaim, proclaiming about the faith. What changed him, and how he became into faith. Mm. So, so maybe Morris is not really imposing, but uh, maybe Christians are just following mm. through yeah, the. Yeah, like the case of Paul. Actually, you should define faith at some point because I don't think Paul had faith. Paul, <laughs> Paul knew. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have faith. You exist. I know you exist. Yes. Mm-hmm. But if I was, I had not met you yesterday, and someone told me about you, I would have to believe you exist. So the fact that Paul had a Damascus experience, Paul knew God exists. Paul saw God. Paul had God. So Paul did not have faith. His level of conviction. How, 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 how do you know that? Because if the story is true, then Paul saw because God. Because his isn't definition it? of faith is belief without evidence. Without evidence. Mm. Uh, so Paul had me is the one who no, believed in God. We believe with evidence. <laughs> no, you can believe. With, with or without evidence. You can believe for good reason, you can believe for bad reason. Maybe to be... And oh, sorry, yes, he's it, finishing. Yes, you're finishing. Uh, yeah, that, that's the one I wanted to say. I really wanted you to follow up on that bit of Paul. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Paul mm-hmm. had... Uh, there is knowing mm-hmm. and there is believing. Mm-hmm. So believing, you don't have... Once you have evidence, you know. It becomes knowledge. Yes. Uh, and that is what faith talks about. But the contrary to that, if you want to be convinced of a claim, Without evidence, you'd have some called a belief. Uh, and to correct that's that, what not you to call faith. 
Yeah, that's what we call faith. Faith is, by definition, is belief without evidence. Because if you have evidence, then it's knowledge. There's something she talked about um, defending God. Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't think you are defending God. I think you are defending your belief in God. <laughs> yeah, and as you correctly said, if God existed, he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is why I used defend. the term mm -hmm. layman's mm -hmm. understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what people are defending is their belief in God, their conviction. Mm -hmm. okay. They are trying to, and I think it's a, as you said, it's a clear argument where uh, even him, he said that you, when you come as a Christian, you start by the default setting that God exists. Mm -hmm. And I think that affects the whole judgment because that's you, once you start with the conclusion, then your process becomes impaired. You, do, you don't become fair to the process. Mm. You should start with a blank page. And then now you start to evidence for God, evidence against God, and you be open to go either way on where, where the evidence will lead you. Uh, uh, Who so does that? Anybody. <laughs> Who, comes, <laughs> Who comes with a blank? Who uh, comes with a blank? Uh, Who comes with, but we agreed the default position is we don't know. You see, but even, that's a, that's still a statement. Yeah, is it is it is, is that a statement of fact? <laughs> yeah, that should be a statement or for any claim, not just claim of God. Yeah, any no, for claim, any claim, any claim. So is it, is that a statement of fact? Yeah, that's a statement of fact. That uh, for everything we don't know, for everything we should start with the assumption that we don't know. Otherwise, if we start with the assumption that we know, then it we will have no interest in trying to follow the evidence that will lead us to knowing. So we have to start with the assumption that we don't know. And no. only knowledge, only the no, and only evidence should guide us, and not our prior assumptions and whatever. Yeah. And that's why I even told you that uh, I don't think most people follow that process, especially in Kenya, where you are brought up in a Christian family. You don't have time to interrogate your beliefs logically. Mm. You just know we are Christian. We go to church on Sunday. We do this. It's it's a catch. It's, it's the religion is intertwined with culture in everyday life. It's become difficult to. Logically, no, now with that statement, so Jared and then Morris, yeah, with that statement mm -hmm. that we should start from a position of we don't know, mm -hmm. you are also assuming mm -hmm. that every human being has the ability mm -hmm. to do his own independent research mm -hmm. and discover whether God exists or not. Will that be your position? Um, no, not everybody has, uh, as you said, you said that uh, ideally, then only the theologian who are professors would be. Yes, we'll be Christians. Mm, yeah. They are the ones who have done <laughs> They the, have to the prove everything. Eh. No, yeah. because like you see, like um, like I believe if I take a painkiller, it's going to heal me. Mm. It's going, I'm going to be well. I don't have to know how the process of research, the chemical formulas in it. I just exactly. need to use it and mm. it works on me. I don't have to know the background information. Mm. But the issue is, does it work? Yes. So, so yeah, yeah, Jared, you wanted to yeah, finish so, that point yeah, and then yeah, I want yeah, to bring Mark. So yeah. if somebody has done the donkey work, Mm -hmm. He has done the work, has built, has already built a bridge. Mm -hmm. And people have been using that bridge to cross the river. Mm -hmm. Would you still insist that I want to find out how this, how this bridge was constructed, mm -hmm. who provided the mm -hmm. money, where the resources come from? Or would it be more important to you that now, finally, you can cross the river? It would be sure more important you. to me that the bridge is there, because I can see the bridge. Yeah. I wish mm -hmm. the evidence for a bridge, we had the same amount of evidence for God as we have for a bridge. Oh, so you are there, then your position is we do not have enough sufficient evidence for the existence of God. Exactly. But do we have sufficient evidence for his non existence? No. That's why my default position is you, I don't you, know. you don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so therefore, when you see the world that we live in, huh? it's not, is that part of the evidence? Or would you consider no, that as part the, of the evidence? The, the earth, the earth, and he said that, the, uh, I don't know if it's you who said the earth. And heavens are evidence for God. Now the earth is evidence for earth. This pen is an evidence <laughs> for a pen. Mm. I cannot say this evidence is a, a, a evidence, an evidence for him that he exists. Mm. Yeah. And actually, just to steal one minute, he said that if God does not exist, life is meaningless. Yeah. Uh, this is like you, you see what would be the alternative. Now, but this is like saying uh, because uh, he's saying that it's meaningless because it doesn't matter eventually what happens. <laughs> this is like saying you're not going to go to a party because eventually the party will be over at some point. <laughs> no. the, the party will is, is fun while it lasts. You get it? Okay. And number two, uh, even if even if life would be meaningless without God, even if I was to prove there is no God and life is meaningless, the, the alternative of saying, okay, the claim of God gives people people's life meaning as much as it's false, so let's believe it. That would also not be a bad would be a bad option. Well, actually, I would say not a bad option. If, if, if I know some people who, I don't believe Christianity is true, but I have seen some people who 
the, their belief in religion has given some sense of meaning. Mm -hmm. I would want them to believe in that. As long as they, uh, they don't make it a claim of fact for everybody. Let, let so me, I don't. The point is, I don't. Be, I don't have a problem with something. Someone believing something false if it gives them some source of uh, hope solace. And, and solace. But uh, because I, I use a lot of logic, I cannot be convinced. I know it's not true. It's hard for me to go uh, to be contacted to be convinced. Okay. I, yes, I, I need to clarify two things. Number one. Remember the question was, why does it matter? Mm. So that's why I was saying, if God doesn't exist, then what we are doing is a waste of time. Notice it is not an argument for the existence of God. Because even if, rightfully as you said, even if we live as if the world is meaningful and there is no God, eventually it is meaningless. Whether you believe it, whether you live as if it does, it is meaningless. So this is not an argument for the existence of God. What it is, is an argument for the illogical nature of atheism. Because the atheist lives as if life has meaning, and yet wants to perpetuate the idea that eventually it is meaningless. You live as if life has value, because, for example, you will say it is not fair, you will talk about uh, slavery like we talked about, you talk about all these evils, but again, remember, if there's no God, then value and non-value are two equal opposing ideas, and why I don't know why we should pick one over the other. So, for example, slavery could be equally good and equally bad, and there's nothing wrong. We mm -hmm. could still own slaves, not own slaves, no difference. But if God exists, the human being has value. You see where I'm going. So while this is not an argument for God, it is an argument that if you're going to have a worldview, your worldview has to also be livable. That is, you have to live consistent with what you believe. So that on one side, it sounds very nice to say that there is no God. But I am saying you cannot live your life as if there is no God that one has to keep, uh, in fact, it is Frank Turek who calls it stealing from God. You have to keep stealing from the Christian worldview, bring meaning into the picture, then live as if life has meaning, but then on this other hand, deny yes, the existence of God. Does meaning necessarily have to come from God? Or can yes. we create our own meaning? That's the point. The created meaning is a delusion. You have created it. So... Is it objective, objectively meaningful or is it just a subjective experience that you are having lying to yourself? It's like <laughs> someone who is, consider a person who sits on the road and says, I am the president of Kenya. That for him is meaningful, isn't it? It's what he is experiencing. But he will never be, well, he is not the president of Kenya at that point. So the objective reality is that there's a president of Kenya and he's only one. Right. But there are many people, for example, in Madare who wake up every day believing. And I'm not saying it is. Please, I hope you don't understand. That's what I'm saying about <laughs> APA. I would I would want to be very respectful so that you don't feel like that's not what I'm saying. OK, no problem. I'm not saying that. And I would do not want to even insult you in that sense. OK, mm. but all I'm saying is that the idea of created meaning is a delusion. It is an idea that you are creating that does not exist, but it is helpful for you to live. All I'm saying is, life does not accord you that opportunity. Mm. If you create meaning and finding it meaningful, it means the universe needs to be meaningful. Are you using the word meaning and purpose interchangeably? No. I know I'm talking about meaning and then there's purpose means direction of life. Huh. Yeah, they are different. Because purpose would mean directionality. Mm -hmm. Okay? And again, that's another reason why I think God exists. For example, think about evolution and science. We say science is changing, it is improving, isn't it? If it didn't have a direction, if it didn't have a, where, a place where it is taking us, then what is it doing? Because what does it mean that science is improving? Does it mean that when we have a microphone rather than shouting with our mouths that we have improved. There has to be a direction that is taking us. And this is where religion comes in very handy because religion gives us the sense of direction so that science, when it is improving, we can say we are becoming better because we have a goal. Mm. There's a place where it is taking us. 
Now, uh, Maurice, Maurice, just, just, just something uh, to help us. Why should, why should anyone? And I know that maybe that is not your objective, mm -hmm. but why should anyone buy to the philosophy of atheism? Mm -hmm. And and I'm I'm coming uh, from a concept like uh, we we shared before we came here, like Paul, uh, King David captured. Uh, I'm not sure if you believe he was there, but King David <laughs> captured that. Uh, the idea of existence of God, that there are people who do not uh, believe in God, believe that God is there. Over 3,000 years ago, and, and it's like, the, it's really taking a slower pace for people to even buy to that philosophy of uh, non-existence of God. So why should someone even uh, buy to that philosophy? Um, why? First of all, you have to know why it's taking a slow pace. Because uh, for the last 2,000 years, uh, over 80% of that time, the church has been, specifically the Catholic church, has been in charge uh, mm -hmm. of the politics. Uh, you know things like, uh, in Europe, like during, he asked uh, why the, the atheists were not the one discovering these scientific things. Mm -hmm. it, no, nobody else was there to do the job. You come out as an atheist. <laughs> no, they were there. Of course, they were there. They were there. They were there. And some were in Christian parliament. Artists, you know that. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Eh? It's like saying, it's like in this room, there are only black people. Yeah. So anything that happened in this room will be done by a black person. So that time, there were only Christians. It was illegal. It was punishable by death to be a heresy. So, no. So, yeah, to be heretic. Yeah, to be heretic. No, yes. they, were, they were heretics even then. Yeah, but they were punished by that. So most people mm. would not want to, to be heretic, to, be, to, to, to contravene the law. In 17th so they, century England. Yep. Uh, mm. people, that's why people like, um, pe people like uh, the person who discovered the Galileo, they yes. ended up in prison. Uh, the one who wrote the evolution of the theory. Uh, da Darwin, those Darwin, are different. He had to wait until the end of his life to publish his work. Because he, he was not aware how the Victorian authority would react to the fact that he studied in the Christian story. So, um, to answer your question, mm -hmm. there was nobody else. To, even a bridge that was built, it has to be built by Chris and they were the one who were there. Um, <laughs> the other question you asked about, uh, what was the other question? Why? Yes. Uh, why it matters? As I said, um, and also that alludes to his question, there are two things. There is, there is value, there is meaning in life. Mm. The way he's saying uh, this thing gives people meaning. That's okay if, it, if it's a claim that gives people meaning. It's okay, give it meaning. But my question is, is it true? Mm. My question is, I want people to believe things that are true as possible and feel things that are false as possible. And they're only true if there's evidence. Yeah, there will be no another alternative. But there's a lot of alternatives, my friend. Because <laughs> any other, anything other than <laughs> evidence would be guess what? No, not guess what. <laughs> uh, number, number one, in life, we all need elements of faith to organize our lives, to live our lives. Yeah. Like, for instance, did you have any evidence that this chair will support your weight no. before you sat on it? No. But I have empirical data over time. I've there are some chairs, chairs uh, some chairs support people. Yeah. But there's also evidence, or at least it has happened in the past, that you will sit on a chair and it breaks. So. Yeah. Or at least a broken one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you looked at this chair without any evidence. You sat on it. Exactly. You came in this. You walked inside this building. You have had buildings collapsing, even in this country. Yeah. Did you have uh, any evidence that this building will hold for the, the, the for the yeah, duration of beer? I have evidence. What evidence was there? Because, because it has held in the past. It has held yesterday, the day before yesterday. <laughs> That's in <laughs> I have, so I'm not 100% sure it will So even today, it will hold. <laughs> I have, no, I'm not 100% sure it will hold, but I'm 90% sure. Because it has done that in the past. If it has done it in the past, so therefore it can do it even today. Yeah, that's that was your yeah. On a balance of probability, it's more likely to hold than not. <laughs> that's induction. Okay. But yeah. even the buildings that have collapsed, mm. they did not collapse the day they were constructed. Yeah. Of course, people lived stay, lived in them. Or some of them people lived in them, and then later on they collapsed. Yeah. So, so of course, I agree with you. At some point, there being maybe he can finish his point. Okay. Uh, uh, that is uh, maybe so, where he was heading, and then now you uh, can So my point is that you cannot. Uh, the, or the, the way the atheists are putting it, that unless we have empirical, mm, proven ex evidence, we cannot believe in anything. But I'm telling you about my, the position of the Christian God or the, the biblical God. First of all, we, we need to have a, a faith in him because in life, we 
need elements of faith to organize our lives. But even the God of the Bible, he is not just saying, believe in me, irrespective of the blind, yeah. uh, uh, control, evidence to the contrary. Just as you say, you walked in this building based on the past experiences. Mm. Several times in the Bible, when you read, God gives his CV. Mm. Say, I'm the God who did this, who did this, who did this. Therefore, based on this, believe me that I will also do yes. this thing. Yeah, so it's not just a blind faith. Uh, and as I said earlier on, we believe a lot of things that uh, we cannot explain. Even just a simple thing as getting with the matter. I'll show you that that brain is not drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maurice. No, you can respond. And then as, as Maurice responds, I, I, want, I, I want you, Mark, to think of what's the place of empirical uh, yeah. and, and, and rational kind of you know, evidences in terms of uh, as a theologian or as an apologist. So I agree. Sometimes you don't have to... You see, it is so deep, there is a claim that... Um, there is the argument that extraordinary claims require extraordinary mm. evidence. Mm. Ordinary claims require ordinary evidence. So it's not every claim, evidence has to rise to the scientific level. If you tell me that you have bought a new car, mm. I know cars exist, I know people buy cars, I might not have seen it, but I can even start planning how we are going to visit Nakuru with a car without seeing it, mm -hmm. because I have seen cars before, I know people actually buy a car. Mm -hmm. uh, if you told me you bought a pet, I would believe you because I know pets exist, and pets, uh, and pets are normal, people, people keep pets. But if you tell me... And what the, I no, if you tell me the pet you bought is the one that cooked dinner yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that, is not, that is not extraordinary, but it's not, it's quite no, it's uh, not clear, because I know pets have been trained to do big things. <laughs> yeah. So that one, I might not take it at surface value. I might want to come and see it doing it. Mm. But if you tell me that the pet you have <clears throat> normally goes, takes a trip to Jupiter and come back regularly, and uh, it's the one controlling our life and all those claims. Then now that's an extraordinary mm -hmm. evidence. Okay. Yeah. But if I would want not just to uh, see the evidence, I might even see it leaving the space and I still might not believe it because of the, I will need extra, uh, extraordinary evidence to support such an extraordinary claim. So ordinary claims, like, uh, of course, in ordinary life, we use a lot of uh, uh, things that we have not seen, data, uh, not, we use, there are things we do without using empirical evidence. But we use past experience most of the time. Maybe, maybe just a quick, a quick before I bring in. Mm. Why then do you want to subject God's existence to not the ordinary? Because claim, it's yeah. an extraordinary claim that there is a creator looking at us in charge of everything, who knows everything, who is all powerful, all good. All number one is because it's an extraordinary claim. Mm. Number two is because of the impact of that claim on the society. In our religious society, as I said, in public policy, in uh, I know that education. makes that makes them smile. Yeah, <laughs> at, least, at least they know there is impact. <laughs> yeah. no, of course, the religion has a lot of impact in mm -hmm. every society, especially in Kenya. Good impact or bad? Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> both. <laughs> and I wish it even if it was false, I wish it could just have a good impact. Then mm. it let it thrive. But they are. It's very powerful in Kenya uh, and in Africa. So. Uh, we, that's why we are challenging it. The question okay. is why. That's why we are challenging it. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, uh, because it is present, it, like there's nothing you can do in Kenya politically without religion. And politics, of course, is what defines how we how we live among each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why we have to challenge that claim. Okay. Mm -hmm. It affects yes. the sorry. It yes. affects mm -hmm. the the kind of development we do. It can affect the school we build. It affects mm -hmm. our curriculum. It affects everything. Mm -hmm. So of course, that's why it has. We want that whatever happens in public sphere, be based on evidence okay. and data. Mm. I want to bring in this issue of creation. Mm. Um, maybe as we, we, we near yeah. uh, the end. And now, uh, maybe just a, a bit. I know that the bit of creation has, 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 has been, or the beginnings, has been a big, a big topic in the existence of God. And uh, maybe I want to start by mentioning three things. You know, when it comes to creation, it is either three options, either that it created itself, mm -hmm. and, or uh, it, it, it existed infinitely, infinitely. infinitely. Mm -hmm. or it was created. 
So I don't know what is your position and then we, we can respond to, or if you have a fifth or seventh option. option. So um, about uh, existence of matter, um, I, I normally choose to uh, believe in the, I, I, I am more biased toward the scientific explanation we yeah. have, which would be uh, mm -hmm. the Big Bang. As he said, it's also very counterintuitive for me. Um, you know, the issue of singularity that all matters were condensed together. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not something I can process in my mind. Yeah. Uh, but that is what the evidence says. But that even that would not still explain the origin. Because the question people normally ask, what was there before the Big Bang? Uh, where, what was there before? So it does not explain the origin. It just explains the, the, the beginning of this expansion process. Mm -hmm. But does not explain what was there before that. Mm -hmm. So that is one. But the, 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 on that one, I don't know. The honest position is I don't know how things came to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have explanations. They are not actual explanations. They are scientific. They are theories. From, from the science. Okay. The big key one being the, the Big Bang, uh, the Big Bang theory, and of course, with life, uh, biogenesis and evolution. Mm. Uh, that is the evidence, that's the best we have so far. It's not the best. Uh, uh, it's, it's one among the theories, it's one we have chosen. No, it's, it's, well, it's uh, scientifically, it scientifically is the it's the best. Yeah. Yeah. So, so scientifically, it's what we have as the best explanation. Mm. It could be wrong. Don't get, I'm not mm. saying this is the gospel. Mm. It could be wrong, mm. but it's the best explanation. So. This is a dark area, this is a gray area where we don't have much information. Mm. Uh, uh, anything maybe, I do from yeah. here would be speculation. That is true. Maybe, yeah. Maurice, I, I really like where you are, and I will be bringing uh, you now to the discussions. So if, and I like the bit, actually it is the best, Big Bang is the best scientifically, but then it brings that bit of what you are saying, you don't know what happened there. Yeah. Now when, uh, when, when Christians come and say, oh, that one actually is supported by the scripture, <laughs> because... Uh, you know, God, God spoke. So God is the one who spoke. And maybe it followed the experiences of the Big Bang. Why, why are you refusing that? That's called post. What, what you are very good That's God of the gaps. Yeah. No, but there is something, post something rationalization. Huh? Where after the fact. Yeah. This I is where after the fact. You, have, okay. you start with the conclusion. Yes. yes. And then, because ideally, if the Bible is the one telling us how things came to be, mm. we, would in, we would discover Big Bang in the Bible. Yeah, it would be the one telling us. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you see as a, and this is the problem with, uh, with the Christianity. I told you the science is better because it keeps changing. The problem that religions have, especially the Abrahamic religion, is that uh, there are things they cannot change. They cannot change the doctrinal facts, even in, 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 when evidence is glaring to the contrary. So what they do is they try to rationalize and merge two things that are invisible, like water and oil. So if you follow the, uh, the Bible, the, the, the world from creation cannot be more than 10,000 years old. And uh, actually it's written there because they give you, you can do calculations from Adam, he had his son, yeah, he yeah. died after five, five years. It gives a very good chronology. So you can estimate up to Abra, uh, the character Abraham, it was about 2,000 years, and then up to Jesus, it was another 2,000 years, and then of course we are 2,000 years after uh, Jesus. So mm -hmm. that's 6,000 years, maximum 10,000. We have fossils that are over millions and millions of years old. We have even plants, uh, a tree, yeah, I think it's in Bhutan, that has, it's normally like a, I don't remember the name, but it has roots. It's normally like a forest, but it's one plant that is connected. Mm. It's been there for, they have dated it for over seven, eight thousand years. Using science. Yeah, using science, of course. Which, uh, which uh, maybe after some time, they might discover that they were actually wrong. Yeah, but it's the best explanation mm -hmm. as, of now. <laughs> as of now. Okay, now so let me bring... That's the contradiction. Mm -hmm. The biggest contradiction between science and, and the Christian story is timeline. Mm. It's a timeline. This Christian story is around 10,000 plus. Uh, and you millions. No, yeah, the world is, the, the plant is but, about but, four But why are plant. you starting the creating, creation story at the Adamic level? Uh, the, why, why, why are we starting it only at, why are we interpreting the word in the beginning was mm -hmm. and give it the time of the years for Adam? So the only why thing, can't I, you? The argument then you can make there is, there was a, millions of years between creation of the earth and creation of humans. You can, that's the argument you make. And still that wouldn't hold because we know human beings have been there, our species has been there for about 300,000 300, years ago. Mm. So uh, that's how our species is, human beings. So even if you use that, you can make the argument, you can 
make a rebuttal, a very good rebuttal against big bang. You can not a rebuttal per se, but you can merge the two. But then when it comes to the origin of life, it becomes difficult because we know life is about 300,000 years plus uh, for human beings and the other life has been there for millions. So if we start from Adam to now, that's about six, 7,000 years. So the problem with life, how old life human beings human being have, uh, have been on this earth becomes a problem. But you can make a good argument for the merging of the creation theory and Big Bang, if you use that argument that All you're right. trying to use. Anyone coming on creation story? Just a question. <clears throat> According to the atheists, does the, uh, human history begin with Adam? No. Mm. No. Adam, Adam is a character that... <laughs> you know, like Ricky Kui had to call and Moby. Yeah, you know, so no, he means human own. beings. <laughs> human beings. Yeah. The history of human beings. Does it begin with Adam? No. Human beings are human beings are a process of evolution of over mm. humans. It, it, whatever it is, they must have one that began it. Uh, maybe I'm not getting the question. Uh. Uh, human beings. Uh. The history of human beings. Mm -hmm. Did it begin with a character called Adam and Eve? No, no, there was no one character called Adam and Eve that started. Oh, they did not been exist. No, 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 no. There was no human beings evolved from other apes. Mm. Okay. We are all a collection of apes. So we are the most advanced apes. Okay. At least we like to think ourselves like that. Mm. But uh, I think you mentioned about uh, you mentioned that Adam. No, I'm no, I'm I'm trying to the the of, uh, mm. of, of the creation. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you had something. Yeah, no, I have many things. Okay, <laughs> say all the many things. <laughs> <laughs> so let's begin with um, the issue of creation and how creation works uh, or the universe. Let's call it the universe. We don't want to special plead and argue that it is creation. Mm. For all that there is now, we can just say the universe is, mm. okay? But the Christian... And to, to be fair, on your question, you asked whether why can't we say God is what is before the Big Bang. That is the God of the gaps argument. Mm. And the problem with the God of the gaps argument is that if you use God to fill in the gaps that you don't know, the more you know, the lesser God fits into the picture. Yeah. You see? So if, for example, we discover from... Uh, what is this, this kind of physics, quantum physics, that we can explain something before Planck time, that is the, you know, the boundary of the Big Bang. If we discover from quantum physics that we can explain that, then God has to move back a little bit more. <laughs> but you will realize that the, the Christian is not arguing that. Mm. The argument from the universe is taking both philosophical understanding and the evidence is that we are now adducing from science and to say that one thing we know is that the universe began to exist. Now, that is not even a Christian claim. It is not a Muslim claim. It is not a religious claim. It is now considered, even in scientific claims, in circles, for example, that the universe actually did begin to exist. I don't because think that's science. It is science because... At the boundary of Planck time, we have a singularity, yeah. which in essence, if you use the calculations that they use, is nothing. So what you have is nothing, mm. then a boundary, and then you have the explosion of the Big Bang, okay? So you have something, and then you have nothing. So at this boundary, the universe begins to exist. And that is, it's not even a, even in scientific circles, it's not a, an extraordinary claim because one could still agree that at this boundary, the universe or what we are calling matter and everything begins to exist before there was nothing. But also we have philosophical arguments for why the universe began to exist. Mm -hmm. And think about, for example, um, the, the impossibility of an, of, uh, an eternal past. Mm -hmm. If the universe has existed eternally, we would not arrive at the moment now. Why? Well, because you cannot count from negative infinity up to now. <laughs> Can you? But we are here now. now. Exactly. Yeah. Which is why the universe cannot be eternally in the past. Hey, mm. It would not have been infinite. I don't get the logic in that. Okay. Maybe I'm, I'm would you count? Artist. Let's uh, use math. Uh -huh. Let's begin from negative infinity. Uh -huh. Okay. 
if negative infinity is a defined point how would you if count if a defined point it cannot be infinity exactly infinity. which is why we can't land at how, now how would we get here? <laughs> or rather you cannot count backwards again from today and get to the end of the so past prorated for past forward can we have infinity forward yes the, the the infinite no what happens is that the infinity forward is a potential we can come close we can keep counting keep counting keep counting we can have what is called a potential infinity but never get to it so that life we keep counting days we get to a billion i don't know after a billion what we have a trillion after a trillion we have a ideas yeah uh, whatever <laughs> all those number of days uh, you can have metric time into infinity but remember you will never get there you can only come close and that's why in fact when you think about when we were doing the math on infinity you just limit it as you approach infinity you never get to infinity the problem is now is the end of the past at this point the past has ended and because the past has ended then it means we have an actual finite past that has ended at this point so you cannot actually have an infinite past and so for those two reasons now notice i have given a philosophical argument for the lack of the infiniteness of the past but also scientific the, is the past is finite eh? yes the past cannot be infinite so if it's sorry to belabor that point that's yes. okay uh, yeah, yeah. um if if the last if past is finite that finite. means it ends at some point eh? yes it ends so at it now at, at that point it begins mm. what was there that yesterday precisely now that's the question we are trying to because if you say it ends last year mm. then there was but remember <laughs> remember <laughs> what what we are trying to find out <laughs> is the universe and when we talk about the universe for example in science we are talking about space space and space is space like you have the planets there and everything you have time and you have matter that's what the universe when we talk about the universe beginning to exist in science we are talking about all those things so that there was no space you know people think about there was a thing here and here is empty space there was no space mm. there was that's no had to process it. exactly <laughs> the best way to think about it is that's like a true. balloon mm. You see, you see a balloon mm -hmm. so think about the surface of the balloon mm -hmm. as the universe okay when it is collapsed if you could collapse it up to the atomic level small 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 you would still have the balloon but it is nothing you know then you start blowing in it it expands isn't it now remember what is expanding it's the universe the pla the, the the planets and matter and everything is the surface and space is being created inside as it expands so it's not as if you had space and it is expanding into space space is being created as the universe it expands, expands. Mm -hmm. you understand that yes. so and that's why i'm saying even scientifically you have a beginning point now there's a theory in science it's called the bodguth bodguth valenkin theorem It says for any expanding universe they have actually shown that it cannot be eternally existent in the past because it is expanding it is using up energy you understand that because it is expanding it is using up energy and the more it is expanding the more energy it is using but we already know that energy is not infinite again we come another reason why the universe is not eternal second law of thermodynamics it tells us that we are losing useful energy in the universe so for example you know uranium you know those macabs of half life and everything we are losing useful energy and we are going to get to a state where the energy we have is useless it's called an entropy state now again if the inf if the universe is infinite in the past then we would have gotten to the end of the half life isn't it because we would have infinite time so we wouldn't have useful energy now you see with all those three things we can already have one argument that the universe is not eternal it came to exist now notice what we are not saying we are not saying it was created as he said it is it could be the case that it just happened by chance right but the other thing that we know is that anything that begins to exist has a cause and i have to be 
a material cause. Mm. It doesn't have to be God. It could be anything that caused it. But you show me anything that you know that began to exist without a cause. a cause. Now, notice what we are not saying. We are not saying that everything has a cause. There are things that could not have causes. Mm. But if it begins to exist, it has a cause. Yeah. So then the question we need to ask ourselves is, what then is the cause of the universe? Now, there are some characteristics of the cause of the universe that we would need to have. Because the universe encompasses all the material world that we know, then the cause of the universe has to be immaterial. We are not saying what it is. But if it has matter, then it was part of the universe. It began to exist. Yeah. So the cause of it has to be material. It could be quantum. For all that there is, quantum is not material, isn't it? There are those particles just jumping. It is immaterial. But then also this cause has to be timeless. Because remember, with the beginning of the universe is also the beginning of time. So this cause has to be timeless. But it also has to be spaceless. Because remember, space is coming to existence. It is not there. It also has to be incredibly powerful. Why? To cause such a huge and powerful universe to exist. Remember, we are just deducing from logic. We are not making any claim. But the other thing is has to be personal. It has to decide that at this point, the universe will begin. Why does it have to decide? It can just be rather well, because before that, sons, let's not use before that, because when it comes to time, the language <laughs> of before time is very complicated. So <laughs> philosophers have come up with a word called sons. It just means logically prior, okay? Not necessarily metrically prior, okay? So sons, the creation, there was no universe. Then at a certain point, there's a universe. So that... Because we are already from the Big Bang, we have already calculated it back to about 14 billion years ago. Why not 16? You see, at because that if point... It was 16, then yes. ask why not 14? You see the point we are making then? <laughs> at that point of willing to cause, whatever that is, that willing to cause, that thing, being, matter, whatever, has to have a will to cause it. Now, when you think about the characteristics of whatever we've talked about, a very powerful, timeless, immaterial, <laughs> spaceless, and personal being, it comes very close to what we are discussing as God. You might not, you, it might not be the Christian God for now, isn't it? <laughs> By all means, it could be a deist God. It could be the God of the Hindus. But at least what we have successfully done is that we have shown that atheism is wrong. Because if there is such a being, spaceless, immaterial, timeless, with a will, meaning it is personal, then we have come very close to the definition of who God is. And so now, with, of course, time fails us. We could go into other evidences of why the Christian God, but there we would argue again, that is from cosmology. We can argue from uh, teleology. morality, teleology, you know, design and everything. And then we come to the evidence of what happens to the man called Jesus. Okay? And this is where we go to the evidence for the resurrection. Again, you can build a case for why Jesus rose from the dead and not necessarily from the Bible. And where we land ourselves then is, the same thing that the Bible has been saying seems to be the same place we are arriving even from the evidences that we have, or at least from what we think is good evidence. Now, remember I said it doesn't have to convince everyone for so long as we think we have built a good case for why it is consistent and sensible to believe that God created the universe. Oh, great. I think, I think that, that's good. And, and so, one, we have come to a point that God, or uh, you, uh, using your words, close to the God we are describing, yes. created the universe. Um, now, now, maybe some, some few comments. We want to start with Morris. Yeah. Um, that's a very good... Uh, Exp uh, expansion of the what we call the cosmological argument. Argument, argument mm -hmm. yes. Um, 
So you see, there's a lot of presupposition, of a lot of assumptions in that, especially the one I barely can pick is when he says he has to be personal and willing. That's a claim that you have to demonstrate. You could, I could actually concede on the other. I'm not conceding, but I could mm. give you the benefit of the doubt on the other. You know, there is this beginning. Mm. Uh, it happened. It had a start. But then you have when you you say it's personal, and you and it's uh, it's personal and it's willing. Mm. That one you have to demonstrate because it could just be random. You, you could be right ninety percent, and then it could just be a random process. So uh, you're making a leap. You're making logical sense until oh, it comes now to when you say it's personal and you're giving it an agent character, you're calling it it. It's, it could just be a random process, a, 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 a random in, quantum process. But in, Incidentally, huh? if you are willing to grant everything else apart from the being being personal, I am also okay. No, because personal, remember I said... Personal and willing. Yes. Okay. Remember I said okay. the argument for God is not a one size fits all. I'm not saying that the cosmological argument is is alone complete in arguing for God. I will use the cosmological yes. argument, mm. but for personality, I the better argument to use is the moral argument. Mm. But then how do you link the two? Well, because mm. since they are both arguments for uh, a necessary being, then I take what I have from cosmology, what I have from design, what I have from morality, when I put together, I will have a powerful, willing, you know, personal, very moral, or good, and uh, uh, what else have I jumped? Spaceless, timeless, and all those things. So that then, what I have arrived at, the best explanation for everything we see in the universe, that is how the universe came to exist, cosmology, how design, we perceive design in the universe, teleology, the fact that there is morality, moral values and duties. When I put all these things together, because they are part of the universe, then God becomes the best explanation for why we have all these things together mm. rather than nothing. So it's a cumulative case. Oh, great. Mm. So I think, I think that, that, that's, that's a very good place to, to, so, to, to put this up. Uh, now, I want, I want us to just... I don't know which camera should we look at. Mm. Uh, looking at this camera here, and <clears throat> we are talking to millions of people who are watching mm. today, and, and 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 they want to grasp from our discussion. Mm. What should they pick up? What should they uh, take home? Uh, how should they live their lives mm. with this kind of conversation? So I want to and to start with Linsa, then I go to Maurice, and then Jared. And then we finish with Mark. Yeah, thank you so much for for the moment again. So to the viewers out there, uh, with the broader discussions and uh, the evidences shared, well, we are likely to know that uh, the su superiority or uh, the superiority God or the superiority being that is presented here is very powerful. That is why even in the creation and the beginning of uh, the beginning of uh, creation, he spoke. I mean, he created the world through speaking. So he breathed out, meaning the reason that is how he created. So let us let us uh, trust in the in the main purpose of the superior being uh, sharing. I mean sharing with us uh, the bigger picture of uh, the complexity of of creation and all that that is in it. Mm. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, uh, Maurice. Okay. Um, that is that. Is that? Yes. Thank you very much, uh, the AIC team. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, it's also very good to see that uh, people out there are willing to have this kind of conversation because mm -hmm. the bottom line is the bottom line is nobody has the truth. Uh, we have to keep looking for the truth, and uh, I believe such discourse and conversations mm -hmm. are the ones that are going to lead uh, to discovery of what could be the truth. The process also could lead us to believing more true things and less false things in the in the future. Uh, what should be your take home? Truth and evidence. That would be my case. Mm. Uh, I think it's, as I said, there are people, 
who have not rationalized their beliefs, not just in religion, in so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important that you interrogate uh, your beliefs uh, to make sure that they are... The, the question is, are they true? They could be comforting, they could be nice, they, but are they true? And uh, that's the process, that's the question we are trying mm -hmm. to respond. If they, and for here, we are defining truth as that which corresponds to, yeah. to the reality. Um, thank you very much. The, I have to say the argument for cosmological does not hold because it's, it's a proof that the universe has a beginning, <laughs> but it's not a proof that there is a God. But we will have that discussion uh, later. sometimes later. Thank you. But otherwise, thank you very much. I'm, I'm privileged to be here. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. I need to, to say thank you so much, uh, Maurice, for once again for accepting to be here with us and accepting to be here with these theologians. And indeed, uh, you are not a very... Uh, your, your arguments are not very easy to crack. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and I pray... And I pray that the Lord will give us more time mm. uh, to have this conversation. Clearly, you guys prayed enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you made our you made you made our work quite easy. Yeah. Because uh, when you say that there is no something yeah. which you can define, that was very easy for us because we have all the uh, everything to to demonstrate. To demonstrate. Anyway. Uh, I like very much, your, first of all, the spirit in which uh, this discussion has been held. That was very, very, uh, very, very good. I'm sure the viewers, wherever they are, they've enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, for this discussion, I don't think it is our task to prove that God exists. That we can, uh, in fact, strictly speaking, human beings cannot prove that, mm. uh, that God exists. God himself has revealed himself to us that indeed he exists. Of course, there are some uh, gaps or some areas we cannot understand. It's understandable. The God who created uh, the universe, to think that all his powerfulness, his knowledge, that there's any human being who can condense it in his mind, it's inconceivable. It cannot work. And as I said uh, at some stage, that in life, we do not have, first of all, to individually investigate everything before we believe in it. We need to have an element of, life, of faith to organize our lives. For us to live, others will not live. If for everything we do, for every food I eat, I go to a restaurant, I must investigate. So where was it planted? Who cooked it? What kind of water did he use? And cooking oil, it's practically possible. We need some elements of, element of faith. And that's how we live our lives. When it comes to things of God, it's not just a matter of a leap in the darkness. Mm. God has given us sufficient evidence as far as our minds can comprehend to show us that indeed he exists. And maybe with the time we might revisit this, that we can adduce evidence upon evidence. Some of it has been touched here about the cosmological theory, the Theological, ontology, all those. We, are, we have just touched them in passing, on them in passing. But uh, with time, we might reduce enough evidence. But that will not be, therefore, proving the existence of God. Mm. God has proven himself that mm. he exists. Mm. Sante. Great. Thank you so much, uh, mm. for Jared, for even finding time to be here as well. Mm. Yes, uh, uh, Mark. Mine is also to say thank you to the AIC team. Uh, I'm indeed grateful for the opportunity just to come and have this discourse. And also, thank you to Maurice. I know sometimes people are not willing to come out and just, you know, speak their mind on these issues. And I think for me, the encouragement, especially to the Christians out there, is that we need to have these conversations. Reach out to your neighbor, to the person who doesn't believe, and instead of seeing them as an enemy, invite mm -hmm. them in and have an opportunity to, to discuss, even if they will not believe. Even if they will not agree with you, at least we still have the responsibility to share this truth and for people to make up their mind. And let's remember, let's put evidence at its rightful place. God has not left us just at the mercy of evidence, and yet evidence is immensely, immensely important. So may the Lord bless you and hope to see you again. Thank you. Very well. Thank amen. you so much. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> uh, such a wonderful time. Thank you so much, uh, panelists, for finding time to be here today. 
Uh, it's always at his feet podcast mm -hmm. at AC Milimani, you know, the place where we are all looking for the truth. And uh, we uh, hope that we've captured the truth. So for the Christians, I hope you have a reason to continue being Christians. And I hope maybe our discussion here has also touched non-Christians uh, to have a reason to believe in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Until next time, looking forward to meeting you at his feet podcast for more. God bless you and thank you.